Introducing What's Country in Vegas, the show to watch for the inside scoop on some of the hottest country celebrities. You'll get a private tour of intriguing historical locations in and around Las Vegas and go behind the scenes at the most talked about country events in town. It's your ticket to everything country in Vegas. Come share the ride with your host, Tina Montana. As Hollywood rolls out the red carpet, it's the South Point that rolls out the gold carpet. And we're here to welcome the 2015 WNFR contestants. Let's go see what they're up to. So when you leave Vegas, do you need like to go to the spa or have a vacation since there's so much happening? You do need a couple of weeks off after the rodeo. <laughs> it's pretty tiring. Uh, this year we got home and, or this past year we got home and my husband said, wow, he said, was that 10 days worth of the full year that it took to get here and it was so we're back <laughs> okay so what I want to know and what I want to tell my viewers is okay how are you going to spend your time um, relaxing after the holidays when you are done with this big event uh, well we'll be headed to another rodeo after the holidays <laughs> okay so she's not getting any time off <laughs> all right so maybe we'll have to find a way to get you to a spa <laughs> right that would be nice hey the South Point has a great one you have to have it here <laughs> tell me your name one more time Jana Bean. Jana Bean. All right, Jana, I wish you much luck. Much luck. Thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Oh, Tav. Well, Tav, you're co you guys come in style. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Who are you with here tonight? This is, yeah, there, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> My name is Tiffany. Tiffany, you look beautiful. And, and I, I heard last year, Tav, you, you kind of broke some records by pulling up in a really eccentric car. <laughs> you want to tell me what that car was? Uh, uh, I, what? what yeah. Lamborghini? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Lamborghini. Ferrari or yeah, Lamborghini? It was, it was something exotic. It, it was, was something uh, exotic. Something so you're exotic kind of... Fast. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> is that, does that go with the saying of Tough Cooper is exotic and fast? Oh, well, we go for fast, for sure. We want to be fast. I don't know. I don't know about the exotic part. <laughs> All right. What I want to know is, while you're in Las Vegas, is there one particular place that really stands out or one place you really love to eat at or go go entertain? Come on. If you're, if you're, if you're bring, you know, bringing these fancy cars, there's got to be one particular place. Anything at the MGM. My favorite restaurant in there is... Um, in craft Steak? The, craft Steak, exactly. That's my favorite yeah, place. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I love craft steak. Craft steak, yes, ma'am. We're headed there later tonight after after this deal's over with, so um, it's going to be a, a perfect evening. Uh, would you treat me to the faux gras? <laughs> come on, come on. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. That faux gras, they have the best faux gras. <laughs> well, best of luck during this this um, this event. I, I wish you the best of luck, and I want to thank you for coming back to Vegas and let me interview you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having you us. Glad it. to be thank back. You. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I heard you're somebody important, sir. Who who are you? I don't have any idea. At, at this point in time, I don't have any idea what my own name is. Well, you look so handsome. I wanted you to sing me a Christmas carol. No, no that's not going to happen. Yeah, this will bring the house down, <laughs> but not in a good way. Come on. It's no. it's WNFR in Vegas. Yeah, There's yes, got to be is. something that's special about this place that's going to make what? you stand out. Is this unbelievable? This week is going to be phenomenal. With the races the way they are and the dollars that are up, the race is going to change every day. I mean, literally, the fans are going to have a, 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 a experience they've never had before. I think we're going to have a better turnout this year than last. What do you think? You know what? We can't even sell any more tickets. We need to build a new building. We need a new building. Did you hear that? Vegas needs a new building. All right. Tell them I said that, though. Well, I, first, got to find out who you are. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Carl Stressman. And I'm what do you do? You're commissioner? Of PRCA. Oh, he's important. Oh, no, that's not really Will you please true. sing me? Sing, oh, come no, on, just no sing me sing. a Christmas carol. No, jingle bells. No, yeah, go ahead. Jingle You're bells. All the mic and you sing. Jingle no. all the way. We're, we're singing jingle because we're oh, selling. We're selling tickets to the WNFR. That's exactly jingle what bells. We're doing. <laughs> thank you so much for your time, Absolutely. sir. My, my, you my have a merry Christmas. What's your name? Trey. Trey, and uh, who are you here with? My dad. Who's your dad? Bobby Moat. And what's he do? Bareback ride. He's a bareback rider, but you know, one of the things I noticed over here is that you had the biggest smile. I, yeah. Yeah, I think you, you ought to, what? I think it's just the littlest kid in the family has the biggest f f smile. I, I think you got, you got it. I think you're going to make it in Hollywood. What do you think, sir? Yeah, I think he's got it knocked out. He, he was standing there in front of the cameras. He was smiling real pretty, big old white teeth doing I, I think you got it. Yeah, I think I do, too. All right, so I'm going to wish your dad here the best of luck. Okay, do it, and maybe he'll actually win it. Uh, <laughs> does he not win very often? <laughs> no, he does. He does? Okay, are you going to be his agent? Uh-huh. Okay, an agent and supporter. You got it, guys. All right, best of luck, guys. Thank Have you. a good night. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, no, my
Uh, he's, he's the verbal one. The verbal who, who, are you the verbal one? Uh, I, is your name verbal? <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, I got another camera over here. Whose camera is this? Uh, these guys are from France. They're following me around They're for from four days. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Parlez-vous français? Un petit peu, oui. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so why are they following you around? Uh, I'm the first European to make it to the finals, so they thought it would be kind of interesting to follow me around. You're the first European to make it to the finals? Ever. Wow, that's <laughs> outstanding. I, I don't think I knew that. I didn't know that. Did you viewers know that? I didn't know that. All right, what, what, are, you doing these, what, are, you, what are you doing or what are you riding or what's the event? I'll be competing in bareback riding. Bareback, that's, that, that takes a lot of flexibility. Well, it's <laughs> something I don't have, but I still made it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we can help you with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to wish you best of luck. Hey, hi to everybody from France. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in to What's Country in Vegas. And best of luck to you, sir. Merry Christmas. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm backstage here with Aaron Watson. Big star. Um, you started out 2015 with a big bang. And I want to say a big bang because you were the first solo male artist to debut at number one. Um, I heard with a self-release, independently promoted album called The Underdog. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. It was. A, it, we've had a great year, a blessed year. Um, you know, um, like my mom says, who'd have thunk it, you know? <laughs> But uh, it was. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> who who would have thought it? But uh, and she's an English teacher, so but I always remember her saying, "Who'd have thunk it?" Just being funny. Uh, it's been a great year, and uh, you know, um, record came out, went number one. You know, uh, it was an amazing deal. Where I remember, I had Rolling Stone magazine mm -hmm. call me up, and they said, "How in the world does a West Texas boy?" with no record deal, no major radio play, outsell the competition. And uh, I said, well, it's a, it's a, I said, the answer to that's simple. Uh, God's blessed me with the best fans in the world. And, um, and then I told him, I said, well, I, you know, and I reckon if Jesus can walk on water, making my record number one is just a walk in the park. And, uh, you know, it, it's been, it's been neat to, be blessed with that platform this year to be able to get up there and give God all the glory, which Thank is his, <laughs> which is his, it's his, you know, it's like, I, you know, I, there's been a lot of things that have happened that I really are kind of, I can't really explain, you know. I understand completely. Um, I, I want to touch base a little bit about some of the songs because it, there's some things that have happened to you in your life that have, have given you the inspiration to write. Um, Fence Post, uh, July and Cheyenne, and uh, that look that was written for your wife, Kimberly. Yeah. So let's start with Fence Post because I listened to that on the way here and it gave me inspiration. And I, can you just tell me a little bit about that song? Yeah, you know, it's just kind of a funny little song that I wrote on the way back from Austin back home to Abilene a couple years back. And it's about an old boy who worked at a record, who's still at one of the biggest labels there in Nashville. And, you know, I, I just, I guess I wasn't his cup of tea, but he basically told me <laughs> that I didn't have, you know, I couldn't cut the mustard. And, uh, you know, so 15 years later, I wrote him a song, you know, just, you know, and really it's a song I wrote not at, at, to be a personal jab at him, but to inspire mm -hmm. others that are chasing a dream, and and to let you know that hey, you know, uh, if you wanna, if you got a dream, you gotta go out there and you you gotta chase it down. You gotta make it happen. You gotta make it happen. If you're waiting around for somebody else to make your dream come true, then you know it's probably not gonna happen. I mean, it happens for some. You know, you you got the right look and you got the right voice and you got the right person giving you the right songs and it can be, you know, manufactured for you, but that that most of the time doesn't happen like that. And you know, do you, years later, here you are. Do you, and do you believe in destiny? I don't know about destiny. I don't know. I don't know about all that. Uh, I know that. But our, our, I mean, we have a purpose, and God sets our purpose for us, and we have a destiny. He opens the doors, and we walk through them. Yeah, but I think God gives me choices, mm -hmm. and I think I agree with that. had I chose to be a a, a a high school baseball coach, I think, you know, God would have, uh, you know, expected me to uh, let my light shine for him 
with that occupation. I mean, mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, I think God gives us the choice to take you know, free will to do whatever we want to do. And I have to say, I agree with you so heartily on that. Yeah, I've had a lot of great opportunities and great choices, and I've, I've chosen some doors, some good ones and some bad ones. Yeah. Um, but I, I really believe that. Um, tell me about your family. You have these three things: family, faith, and fans. Yeah. I want to know about your family. Well, I have. Um, I have a wonderful wife, Kimberly, and I think she has more fans than me. Don't uh, forget he wrote the song, yeah, That Look, yeah. about his wife, Kimberly. Yeah, pretty Tell much. the fans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kimberly, now he's not single. Yeah. <laughs> Kimberly's, Kimberly, uh, there it is. That, it very, married. very married. Cute and very married. <laughs> very married, yeah. I'm, I'm not really in, I'm not attracted to women anymore. I like fishing boats. Wow, that takes a lot of patience. Yeah, fishing, <laughs> fishing boats are a lot less, they're easier, you know, uh -huh. you can turn them off. So are you a good fisherman? Well, yeah, it, it, I mean, I'm all right. Okay. <laughs> well, when you, ha I, when you have three k kids. You have a lot of patience. <laughs> well, you, you, I, I don't really get the fish. I spend a lot of time untangling line. Uh-huh. And, and <laughs> baiting hooks and stuff. My like husband that. takes a lot of my time. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But, uh, and then there's, and at the house we have Jake. Jack and Jolie Kate and wait um, Jake Jack and Jolie Kate don't say that too fast Jake <laughs> so Jake is nine Jack just turned eight and she may be my favorite one okay Jolie Kate <laughs> just turned six wow so, okay. and and we had a little girl that we lost named Julia Grace and uh and that that leads me back to another song that you asked me about uh and that's uh July and Cheyenne and a July and Cheyenne was the first song that I wrote after we lost Julia. Um, after after we lost Julia, getting up, getting out on the road and playing shows was a real struggle for me. Um, you know, just just didn't seem right. You know, mm -hmm. playing shows to people having fun, and I was heartbroken, homesick, and uh, time to heal. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, there really wasn't time to heal. You know, I mean, I daddies have to work. Sure. You mentioned that. Um, and, and some, I guess, in some quotes that I read about family, you know, being a good husband and a, and a good uh, provider. Um, I'm going to touch point now on just another subject. We are here at the WNFR. Um, how, what's your relation to the rodeo? Did you used to ride or anything? No, no. Nope. I liked baseball and girls. And uh, what position in baseball? Short and second. Okay. <laughs> Favorite team. And left out. <laughs> Left out. Favorite team? I like the Strohs and the Rangers. Okay. Yes, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I got like both of them. But uh, now I, I just coach. I coach the boys' team. But um, you yeah. know, wait. I, I have to ask. When do you get time to coach? Because I saw your tour schedule, and it's pretty full for the year. How do you find time to do this? It's pretty. It's full. But you know, even if you tour 150 days a year, you still have, you know, 200 plus days at home. So it's just trying to keep that balance. So. And I saw that you're going to France. We're going to France and Italy and uh, the UK. It'll be, I think, our fourth or fifth European tour. Do you know that we just met a contestant from France that's in the WNFR? Wow, that's amazing. For, it was a city. He said it was his first time. And, and you know, being as what's been happening in France, I, th I actually think that you'd be a positive influence in France. Well, we, we're, we're, we've been there before, and the people are just wonderful. So we're looking forward to going back. I think that's outstanding. Um, all right. Working hard is serious understatement. This is a quote that I read. And, again, I saw your schedule. It's very full. Um, you work very hard. Um, I can tell that um, you're a big believer in Christ. For people or, you know, young fans out there that are out, you know, they want to get in the music industry, is there any advice you can give them, you know, on, on what you've learned and, and your just, just kind of your life, what's happened? Just tell them. Well, first of all, I would say you Look need... Look <laughs> you got you got to learn to play the guitar. Okay, and you got to write. You got to write. Okay. Yeah, people that say, I want to be an artist, I want to sing... And I'm like, well, what are you going to sing? Well, I, songs. I was like, well, who's going to give you good songs? Well, I don't know. You know, you've got to play the guitar. You've got to write your own songs. And, and you got to get out there and you got to sing. I don't care if it's, uh, you know, outside a gas station. 
I mean, you got to get out there and sing your songs and uh, and believe in what you do. And believe in what you do. Do you have? Do your songs have a a mission or a statement, or do you just they come from the heart? And when you just feel something, you write about it. Well, when I feel something, I write about it, and I write a lot of bad songs that. I would say that. Well, <laughs> y you know, I do. I mean, I, y people never hear them, but, it, you know, for every... Are these songs in the shower? Yeah, songs okay. in the shower. <laughs> but it, it really, but for every every song that materializes into something that, I've, I, that I'm proud of, you know, there's there's 10 that were swinging a miss. And uh, But it's just persistence and being dedicated to what you're doing, whether it's singing or acting or whether you want to become a lawyer or a doctor or a coach whatever your dream is it's 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 hard work and, and you got to get out there and get it and um and don't be discouraged when somebody says that you can't uh you know i'm using a lot of things there's been a lot of things this last year there's been a lot of positive things but there's been a lot of negative things and i'm using those things as a way to fuel my fire for this next record that i'm working on right now and uh so you use those kind of things to you know, I, I mentioned to your, your tour manager that um, when bad things do happen to us in bad circumstances, it's, it's where we mature as a believer. We, yeah. we mature so we can go into the next threshold of our life. And, and I really do believe in that. So um, I just want to say, yep, we got to look at our fans out here. Yep, get, get up and close and personal. <laughs> All right, we're going to stay tuned because we're going to show you how to follow Miss, or Mr. Aaron here um, on his tour dates, how to reach him, check out his songs. He's all over YouTube. He's got, you actually had some great interviews on YouTube talking about your faith, your beliefs, your family, things that are very, very important in the world and in our country right now, and especially to our youth. Well, thank you. It's an honor. Thanks for having me on your show. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yes, See you soon. Keep it country. Keep it real. Thank you. In the rain, in the mud, in July, in Cheyenne They had to carry away that brave young man A little part of every heart of every rodeo fan Died there in the rain, in the mud, in July, in Cheyenne You know, there's two essential things to looking like a cowboy. Having a great cowboy hat and definitely finding a great pair of cowboy boots. So I decided to go down to Boot Barn, our local Western store, and learn more about cowboy hats. I met up with Michael. He's our local hat shaper over there. And he even taught me a few things about shaping hats as well as selecting the proper one for my head. So come along, let's share the ride and go find out what's up. <laughs> Just pulling into Boot Barn, you know there's two essential elements in looking like a cowboy. A good pair of cowboy boots and a nice looking hat. So I thought I'd go down and see the expert, Michael, over at Boot Barn, who can give us some more insight about how to look. Let's go inside and see what he's up to. Michael, hey, I ran into Randy here. Randy, where are you from again, Randy? Alberta. Alberta, he came out here for the rodeo. He's looking for a hat. Okay. Um, I think he kind of knows what he wants, but you just want to... Come a little closer. Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, and tell Michael here, what kind of hat? Have you, did you already pick one out? Did you see one up there or what? Oh, there's lots of nice hats here at the boot barn, and and uh, and I've kind of got one picked out. Like we're we're on a ranch down there, and, and uh, so we're looking for ranch hats. So looking for ranch hats. Do you specialize in any ranch hats here, Michael? A little bit of everything. We've got ranch hats. We got some really nice dress hats for going out doing horse shows or events, stuff like that. A little bit of everything. Okay, let's, walk, let's go ahead and walk over here and see what okay. we got going on over here. Gwen, is there anyone in particular you're looking at? Well, I was looking at this this hat right here. Like, uh, like yeah, it's a good looking hat. And, and uh, Do you know your size? I, it used to be six and seven eighths, but maybe my head's got a little bigger, so uh -oh. I, I don't know. You know, if you get a bigger head with time here, it means you're getting smarter and wiser, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> what size we got there, Michael? It's a seven. You can try oh, that on. Just uh, for a, yeah, you betcha. Let's try it on. Hey, let's, can we come over here? Can I see? Oh, let's let our viewers see what it, trying to hats on all about. Here, I'll hold that hunting hat for you. Oh, it's a little small, I think. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah it's so you don't small. want it too tight? Don't want it too tight. Okay, don't want it yeah. too tight. All right, so we're going to go up a little bit. Yeah, uh, what's the next size up there, Michael? Seven and an eighth, seven and a quarter. Okay, looks like Michael got his hats down here for Randy. And let's see here, you pulled off. I think you said you went to the next size up, right? Yes, this is a seven and an eighth. He had tried on a seven. 
that was too small, so we're going to go up the size. What type, of, what type of material is that hat made out of? This is a rabbit and beaver, beaver hair combination. It's a 5X. The more X's you have, the higher the beaver hair content and lower the rabbit hair content and a better quality hat you have. And now with a better quality hat, does that mean it will be able to be shaped a lot more? Like, like a boot, a good boot, you can, uh, you know, put new heels and it's, soles on them? What it actually means is the more beaver, the more water and weather resistant it is. Oh, mm. oh, and that's important for him mm -hmm. up in Alberta where it's cold and the, the elements are totally different than they are down here in Vegas in a dry climate, right? Right, right. All right, so much. I'm going to let you go to work and just kind of go ahead and start shaping him here. Give that a try and let's see. Okay. We're in the ballpark here. Oh, it's, oh, oh, looking much better, looking much better. How's that feel? It feels great. Feel, feel, look, that one looks really good on you. It's not too tight. Now, what if yeah, it was no. getting too tight? Would it stretch out after time? They'll stretch anyway. Uh -huh. You want to buy a hat. When you buy a hat, you want to buy it comfortably snug. Okay. You don't okay. want it shutting off the blood tight. You want it to buy, I always use my finger as a rule of thumb. <laughs> you do about a thickness. Do that finger. again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I always use my finger as a rule of thumb. Okay. <laughs> You, I always go about a thickness of your finger above your ear and about the same above your eyebrow and that should be pretty much now my, low enough where you want it on your head so that if you're out in the wind, it isn't going to blow off your head. Right. Now one of the things, Michael, too, a lot of these hats, they're made either regular or oval. Like for me, I've learned, I ended up going to a custom maker to figure out what type of head I actually do have and I have an oval head. Yes. What type of um, shape does Randy, or what, what type of shape does he have? Randy's got on is a long oval. Okay, That's it's a long oval. Most of your resist all hats are a long oval except for some of their straws. Stetson is more of a, a regular oval. It's more of a rounder fitting hat. Um, Larry Mahan hats are made round as well. Um, Charlie One Horse is round. Um, Saratelli hat company that we also have here is, is more um, long oval, but not as long as a Resistol. Resistol's the longest, and that's why they're, a lot of people, most people probably you take 10 people, probably seven of them are going to need a, a long oval. That's most common. Okay, now, so if the hat that you buy is in stock, um, is a regular, and you're a long oval, you can usually put some type of foam into it, um, or because sometimes people are those in-between sizes, is that correct? And you do have people that are in-between sizes. What you can do a lot of times if it is a round hat, and say they have a hat that belonged to a, their grandfather, their dad, mm -hmm. brother, whatever. You can elongate it, stretch it, and make it a long oval. I do that all the time here. I've got... Well, show some of your tools. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Randy, do you know about any of these tools in here? No, I don't. All right, so as a rancher, you're also going to learn about hat shape, and that could be your next um, your next calling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this I use to, to elongate it front to back. This, okay. This is to make it into a long oval. And if you look at these, they're made out of wood. They're made out of hard maple. Mm -hmm. They're tapered. The smaller end goes up inside the hat. The bigger end goes down on the bottom. And you just insert it into the hat, which I don't have one handy here. Oh, let's see. Let's use his. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to elongate this. But basically, you just you set it in the hat. Okay. You don't bury it all the way down here. You just put it like halfway down and there's plenty and just crank on until it's a little snug and then what I do after that is I actually since I have a hat steamer here I steam the hat right where the brim and the crown come together on both ends of it to loosen it up so that it'll stretch a little bit easier by doing that also it makes the hat stay that way once it cools off it'll take that shape and stay in place okay. very, nice. So that's very nice but a lot of people at home don't have the luxury of having a steamer you can also do that with a tea kettle well, Michael, that's why we come to you. Yeah. <laughs> we lost Randy. I think he went to the boot section over there. So let's go ahead and find out what we're going to do about cleaning and shaping this hat so he can come back and get it. Um, is there anything you want to point out about the hat? Well, it has a little dust on it just from us handling it and trying it on here. But the biggest thing with hats for maintenance is brushing them to keep all the dust and lint and dirt off of them. And you use that type of type. It looks like a little sponge. This is actually a hat sponge. It's made for hats. It's a man-made sponge. It's not uh, one that you get from like the ocean for doing dishes. That's great. Well, I'm going to let you do your job. Maybe okay. we'll kind of watch you here while I'm, I think I'll go over and try to find what happened to Randy. I think I'm going to go try to find Randy okay. while we watch you shave. Getting their hats all shaped and it looks so pretty. Michael, my hat. I 
need to look pretty. I'm getting ready to go to the rodeo, and I think I should look stunning. Can you do anything with this thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, can give, we can give it a makeover. All right. What do you think here? All right. Oh, I might need some foam put in it, too, because I got one of them long oval heads, so I'm going to need I, to have I some. I have plenty of foam. All right. Let's let Michael do his magic, a... and we'll come back to see what my hat looks like. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so it looks like Michael's got my hat done. Let's put it on and see how we look here. What do you think? Looks pretty good. I look pretty good. Am I ready to go to the dance, guys? <laughs> Does it make me look like a real cowgirl in Las Vegas? <laughs> All right, you heard it here. I, I think I'm a real cowgirl now. So I'm going to go ahead and let's go check out maybe some boots. Um, find out, let's go find a pair of boots. What do you think, Michael? Sure. Can you help me with that, Michael? I can. All right, let's go. All right, yes. let's go. Let me roll up my sleeves here and let's go look for some comfortable boots because, again, boots are an essential part of the American cowboy. And if you want to go to a rodeo, you've got to wear a pair of boots. Oh, yes. You All sure right, do. so I thought I'd, I picked out a couple selections and I thought maybe you could help them help me with them and understand more for our viewers what the boots are. This was kind of a nice boot um, by Dan Post. It had a nice round toe and I, I know it's really popular with, I'd say an older gentleman from, it's that old base. Can you tell me more about yeah, it? Yeah, it's a cowhide boot. It's uh, all leather. It has, Dan Post has predominantly had a more of a cushion insole in their boots for quite a few years. They still have it in there. It's mm -hmm. uh, more of leather now than it was a, a, a fabric cushion. Uh, this is also pegged on the bottom. With this boot, the way this is constructed, they call this three-quarter welt. What that means is they sew the boot to the welt three-quarters of the way back. They don't sew it all the way back. They sew it three-quarters of the way. And then they peg, peg it with pieces of wood, usually. It is wood. Sometimes they use brass through the other layers to hold it together. It's so traditional if, uh, construction, basically, of a, of, of a boot. So if the heel wears down, the sole wears down, you can still refabricate this oh, yes. boot. And it, yes. the cost is, the price is really reasonable. It's $189 for this boot. That's yeah. very reasonable. Yep. And I, I think for comfort level, you're still, you've got a little bit of a style there, but you're still going to get a little of the comfort. Yeah, it's a semi-round Arto. It's got a walking heel on it. it. It suits a lot of people. It's a good beginner boot, too, because if it you is. haven't had a boot before, that boot fits most people pretty well. It fits pretty generous. So, so it's good for a wide foot narrow. Uh, this is another gorgeous boot um, by Lucchese. Uh, square toe boots are really popular right now, yes. especially in the Western world. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit of a low shaft. Uh, I really like the look. Is the is it ostrich? Ostrich, yes. Um, tell me a little bit more about this boot. It's uh, constructed basically the same way as the damn post. It's a three quarter inch welt or three quarter sewn welt. You see the nails more. Pegged. Lucchese uses, on their boots, they use what they call lemon wood pegs, and the reason they use lemon wood, because when lemon wood gets wet and dry, it expands and contracts with the leather and stays in place and doesn't fall out. Um, but yeah, they're a very, very good boot. These have been in business since 1883. Wow, and again, look at that heel right there. So this is, again, not very high heel. It's gonna be pretty comfortable. Um, gosh, pull this one up too. This is, now I like this boot. I love the colors, but I really like the sole. So mm -hmm. this to me is gonna be a working man's boot. So he's got a little style, but it's also a working man's boot. Yeah, this is an Ariat boot. Uh, Ariat's kind of new to the Western world. It's, uh, they're a very comfort oriented boot. They actually have oh, wow, look a at that removable sole. insole that you can take it out and if you wear this out, you can buy a new one and put it in here. It's got a little cushion on the bottom Very of that, so our viewers so. can see that right there. I really like that. Mm -hmm. So that happens because your soles are going to, your cushions are actually going to wear out pretty quickly. And we actually have a lot of people that will buy this insole and put in other types of boots as well. And the, um, again, the price is really reasonable. So I guess on a uh, working boot, that's two forty nine versus a Lucchese boot. It's going to be the leather because it's a very high quality yeah, leather. Your, your ostrich is going to be more money because it, yeah. it's an exotic so it's skin. This Beautiful. Is, this is cowhide, uh, so it's not going to be nearly as much as, as ostrich would be. Gorgeous boots. Gorgeous boots. Gorgeous boots. Oh, I like that one. Ooh, of course, now we're going to go into the bling bling with the snip toe. I like this boot. <laughs> this is very Vegas y. <laughs> uh, snip toes. So I, I've got a pair of snip toes on. Um, snip toes seem to, seem to be more popular with the ladies rather than the men. Yeah. Yeah, now, this is so. a fashionable boot, of course. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear this boot riding. My, my studs might fall off. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be a good um, idea. This Randall Gringle, they've been around for a, lo for a while, haven't they? They've been around Very a popular. While. Uh -huh. they, um, um, tell me about that boot. <laughs> that's, uh, this is, uh, your old Gringle boots are, are made in, uh, in Old Mexico, done by Leon Mexico. They're made very well. Um, the people that make the boots, the, the people that do the best job making boots are all from Mexico.
Really? So why not go there and have it done? That's most of the people that make the boots in El Paso are from are from Mexico, and there's generations of people that have been in the boot making business. But this uh, this is loaded with uh, Sikorsky crystals on this whole oh, entire wow, boot. Oh wow, gorgeous. And this, this that's quite a boot, I'll tell you. It's, it's a bling bling boot, and I, they yes. could probably see me coming from a very long ways away. I, you know, if you want to be a star, you gotta wear a very star-studded boot. <laughs> I like this boot. I think I'm gonna have to go try some boots on. Is that okay, can I try some boots <laughs> of on? Of course. <laughs> All sure. right, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> That's our show, folks. We got to go now, but we want to thank you for tuning in to What's Country in Las Vegas. Stay tuned to our new show next week. You never know who we might run into or who we might see or where we might be. Keep it real and keep it country. Thanks for watching What's Country in Vegas. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on YouTube. If you'd like to be a part of our show or are interested in advertising, please use the contact info on the screen.